there's no time for a jaunty intro, we've got to tell you all about 2010 on PS3 in under five minutes. On your marks, get set, Kaz, here I! Wait, we mean go! The year started with an unusual amount of bang and fizz. January saw the release of big-hitting sword and witch hair slashers Bayonetta and Darksiders, along the more pedestrian gunnage of Army of Two, 40th Day and Mag. And don't forget, or maybe do, the jetpack jollies of Dark Void, a game which ticks our Nolan Northometer to one. February, normally a cold wasteland of no good games ever, was also sprinkled with gems. Solid JRPG White Knight Chronicles got its UK release, and God of War baiting Dante's Inferno put the metaphorical willies up Kratos by being way better than expected. And while we were a little disappointed by the holding pattern sequel of Bioshock 2, we were totally blown away by Quantic Dream's innovative Heavy Rain, which brought drama and emotion to PS3 in a way never seen before. And it wasn't the only PS3 exclusive knocking us out of the park. In March, the hugely anticipated God of War 3 arrived, delivering big on muscular generation-leading visuals and huge action gameplay that put Dante firmly back in his little box. Kratos' heavy footsteps scared most of the competition away, except for the brave soldiers of Battlefield Bad Company 2, which turned out to be a refreshing alternative to Modern Warfare 2, and the outright madness of Just Cause 2. The post-Christmas lull arrived belatedly in April, a month bare of major releases aside from tournament tie-in 2010 FIFA World Cup and Super Street Fighter 4. Luckily, a team of latter-day heroes were standing by to save the day by unleashing a powerful new form of wonder on the world. Yeah, first play finally launched in April too. If April was quiet, May really wasn't. 3D Dot Game Heroes, Skate 3, Lost Planet 2, just some of the games we didn't have time to play properly because we were too busy with Rockstar's brilliant Western epic, Red Dead Redemption. It was also a big month for destructive arcade races, with Blur, Split Second Velocity and Mod Nation Racers all hitting the streets. In June, we finally got to see what we'd all been missing when Demon's Souls arrived in Europe, as it turned out mostly being killed in the face. It was just part of a hectic schedule also featuring Green Day Rock Band, Alpha Protocol, hello again Nolan, and Tiger Woods, let's just drop it with the hooker jokes, yeah, PGA Tour 11. Special mention goes out to PSN stunt bike platformer Joe Danger for being great and also for being made by four men in Guildford, and to Singularity, a time-twisting shooter that was way better than its lack of fanfare deserved and which brings our Nolan North count up to three. With the apparent logic that sunshine melts gamers into plastic so they can't go to the shops, literally nothing good was released in July, barring a better than expected Toy Story 3 tie-in and DLC packs for Modern Warfare 2 and Bad Company 2 that saw PS3's biggest shooters go head to head. August fared a little better, with Goodfellas shaped mob epic Mafia 2, oh hi Nolan, grimy Digivision disaster Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days, which lest we forget included this, and Madden NFL 11, propping us up until the start of the silly season which kicked off in September. The long march to Christmas began with meticulous sim F1 2010, zombie crunching crowd control in Dead Rising 2 and the arrival of an entirely new way to interact with PS3 in the shape of PlayStation Move, with sports champions and start the party starting the uh, motion control party. Amongst the slew of must-play releases were high-quality adventures in Slade Odyssey to the West and Castlevania Lords of Shadow, Rocket Needs Space Shooter Vanquish, the rebooted Medal of Honor, and solid RPG sequel Fallout New Vegas. EA's take on MMA was less essential, but sports fans were more than well served with footballing giants FIFA and Pez. It wasn't all guns and balls though. The casual gaming scene kicked back into life with musical sequels Rock Band 3 and DJ Hero 2 plus the life-swallowing voodoo up of The Sims 3. Well done, October, you big month, you. Not that November was much quieter, with Need for Speed Hot Pursuit pumping burning petrol into the cold veins of EA's slumbering giant and Call of Duty Black Ops becoming the biggest game literally ever. <laughs> didn't even look like it was trying that hard. Then, of course, there was factory-lined follow-up Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, which brings our Nolan Northometer to five, even though we missed out Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions and the long, long-awaited return of PlayStation Titan Gran Turismo 5. Luckily, nothing happened in December except for it getting darker earlier and you buying this episode of First Play. Well done, you. And well done us for summarising the year in less than five minutes. What? It was how long? Oh, FFS. Merry Christmas. <laughs>